Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to the DD Valley YouTube channel. Today we are doing episode 6 of our Biome Explorer series. Uh, if you are new to the channel, DD Valley is everything Disney Dreamlight Valley. So we are going to be talking everything, we're going to be doing some gameplay, we're going to be talking updates, we're going to be doing uh, reviews on characters, we're going to be doing... Um, everything to do with tutorials tips tricks to help you get started if you're even if you're a seasoned player at the game hopefully you can learn something else too uh so today this is episode six of biome explorer and biome explorer is a series that is just that where we go to each biome and we explore it this is a series kind of meant for new people but can also be helpful for people who maybe uh, are struggling finding things in the game and that's what we're going to be doing here so first let's talk about how we got here so right below us here uh is the plaza so this is off so this is the plaza right down there so there we are right here so up top to, to the left here is where we have the sunlit plateau so this is going to cost you seven thousand dream light to get up here so make sure you are doing those dream light duties these are your daily duties that they never go away. They constantly refresh so you can constantly add uh, dream light to your total there. And then every time you do anything in the game uh, is going to add more dream light to you uh, to your total there. So you are unable to lock uh, biomes and realms. So here we are in the sunlit plateau. I think this is one of my favorite looking biomes. I think it's just nice, nice and sunny. Uh, like kind of has a desert feel, but also lots of grass, right? It's very nice, and I love the look of uh, Scar's house here. I think that's that's got to be the coolest house in the game. I think that is just so cool. All right, so let's get into it. So um, let's we always talk about these uh, these biomes here. We always start with flowers. So we have some flowers right here. Let's talk about it here. There are two types of flowers uh, we have here. We have uh, bromeliads, and then we have um the house leaks so these shorter ones here are called the bromeliads so we have uh we have the yellow ones we have the red ones and we have pink ones and the taller ones over here um this one kind of looks orange but it's actually um oh yeah it is orange house leak yeah orange house leak and a pink house leak uh sometimes when the sun sets these kind of start to look a bit uh yellowy but they are definitely orange all right so moving on from that um Let's see if I can... Oh, there we go. We have the spices right here. So this is the spice that we have here. It is vanilla. Oh, look at that. We unlocked the memory too. Let's see if we get a memory or if we get coins. We had a lot of coins lately. Ah, same thing again. All right. So vanilla is the spice up here. As we know, each biome except for the beach has a spice that is uh, harvestable. So vanilla is the one up here. Again, useful in a lot of desserts, uh, recipes, and stuff like that. Um, further to that, if you haven't uh, checked out any of the videos, uh, be sure to check out the Biome Explorer playlist on my channel. Uh, but if you haven't watched any of the videos yet, um, you won't know that I have moved all my fruit bushes and trees down to the meadow. Uh, that is just so I can uh, efficiently harvest everything all at once. But had you just unlocked this biome, uh, you would have found cherry trees and cocoa trees up here. And then if we fully upgrade Goofy Stands, which I have here, uh, we have four seeds in this one we have three vegetable seeds and then we have one crafting uh seed as well so the three vegetable seeds we unlock we unlock chili peppers we unlock soya and we unlock um zucchini and then we also unlock the white ones that are cotton and cotton is actually a crafting material not a vegetable so you can't use cotton obviously to uh in any recipes but you can use it in crafting the main use of it is to make fabric which comes in handy uh, in a couple quests in the game so that's a very good one to uh to know where it is uh quite often like right now it looks like goofy's selling double zucchinis here for some reason but quite often you can just buy it outright instead of planting it you can you can't buy very much of it at once but you still have that option if you just need a little bit of it at one time all right, now I just want to take a quick break here before we get into any materials. And let's talk about the critters up here. So the critters up here are some of the easiest and hardest ones to feed. And I'll explain. So I'll get more in depth of this in Critter Patrol once I start that series. But here we have the sunbird right here. And this is the critter. So they are the easiest ones to approach. Uh, beside the squirrels, you just walk up to them and the prompt pops up. But they all have a different favorite food. Most of them have a different one of these flowers that are in the plateau as a, different, as a favorite food. But you'll have to wait for the video to come out. Uh, to, so I'll list all the favorite foods for each uh, sunbird. Because there are five different sunbirds and they have five different favorite foods. 
So uh, stay tuned for that video coming later on. Now let's get into some of the materials that we can find up here. Up here we have soft wood, hard wood, like hardwood like we have in most biomes. And we also have these white ones here. These are dry woods. This is the first biome that we encounter that has dry wood in it. Um, and once again, with all my biomes, I've put all the trees around the perimeter of the biome. So it's very easy to just do a quick lap of the perimeter, collect all the wood in just one single go, and then you're gone. Um, I find it's very easy because I use wood for a lot of crafting. I'm crafting a lot of chests right now uh, and fences, stuff like that. So it's very easy for me just to do a quick lap of each biome, get all the wood I need all at once, and then just uh, get back to crafting. So that's a recommendation I have if you're looking for some efficiency. Uh, but obviously, I uh, get how people like the natural look too. The Disney designers did a great job of making these biomes look amazing when you first get to them. Uh, I just think it, uh, I just like it a little bit more cleaner. That's just my preference. Uh, let me know in the comments what you do with your biomes. Uh, if you uh, move anything around in every biome every time, or if you just leave things the way it is. All right, so materials. So we went over the wood. Uh, each biome has six mining spots, as we know. So here's one of them here. So at this mining spot, we can get some iron ore. And we also have the chance to get gold nuggets in these ones as well. So gold nuggets can be crafted into gold bars. And gold bars can be crafted into various items uh, in the game. So those are kind of handy to have. I also find that Scrooge McDuck quite often will have gold nuggets or gold bars on his list of favorite uh, uh, gifts to give him. So that's just something to keep in mind there. Um, always nice to have those around. Now if we're doing any digging up here, you're most likely going to get soil, but you can also get pebbles uh, as well. And I cleared out the biome earlier this morning, uh, but quite often there are animal bones out here, and that's a great source of clay. Um, I would say that the glade is a more consistent source of clay because you can get clay all the time, whereas here you have to wait for the bones to appear every day to you and then be able to clear them to get the clay. But great source of clay up here as well. And as well, uh, when you are digging uh, in a glowing hole, you will either get dream shards or night shards. That's the same with every biome. I just thought I'd mention it just in case someone like this hole right here. I just thought I'd mention it just in case. Now, um, for gems up here when you are mining, uh, citrine and shiny citrine, similar to the glade we can find, but then we also get introduced to uh, tourmaline and shiny tourmaline, which are the pink gems. It looks like I have to have a rock that has them sticking over right there. So pink gems, very pretty gem here. Uh, this is the first uh, biome we encounter that has tourmaline in it. Uh, and also, like every other biome, you also have the chance to get onyx, which we can use to make night shards. Now, moving on from materials, let's move on to fishing. This place I find very difficult to fish in. There's only a couple spots where the ripples kind of spawn. Uh, this one actually has a lot right now. Usually there's only two or three in a river. It looks like we got four right now. And then we have one in the pond over here. Um, I find it difficult uh, here because I find the uh, the ripples don't spawn very much. And lots of times when they do, I'm only getting white ripples. Maybe I'm just having bad luck with it. Let me know in the comments if you're having better luck fishing here. Uh, but let's talk about it. So. If you fish in a no ripple area, you're going to be getting some seaweed, you're going to be getting some red algae, or you're going to be getting some bass. That's just pretty standard. It's getting those two and either bass or cod if you fish in a no rippled area. If you go to the white rippled area, we're going to be looking at getting some perch uh, or some salmon as well. So salmon is the first time we're seeing salmon as well. Uh, salmon, I find I catch more consistently uh, up in the uh, frosted heights. But you know what? I do catch salmon down here as well, so I thought I'd mention it. Uh, blue ripples down here, they're going to get you some carp or tilapia. Uh, carp, I'm pretty consistent down here. Tilapia, not so much. Tilapia, again, I think I catch more of it up in Frosted Heights. But that, again, that might just be me. Um, and then walleye are going to be the orange ripples here. Walleye um, are pretty consistent with the orange ripples here. Um, the orange ripples I actually don't really struggle finding here a lot of the time, but it just sometimes it just runs out and it seems like I'm only getting white. I actually find the blue ones are the hardest to find here a lot of the time. And last but not least, let's talk about the characters here. I already kind of prefaced it earlier on, but with the update, uh, you unlock uh, Scar is available up here. And there is Scar's sick house again there. Look at that thing. 
Uh, Scar has a couple quests for you. Uh, Hiyati is supposed to be a pretty main character for the rest of the game. So I'm interested to see what Disney does with him there. But yeah, so there's Scar's house there. And that pretty much wraps up this biome. Um, stay tuned because next we are going to be heading to the Frosted Heights for episode 7 of the Biome Explorer series. Uh, let me know in the comments if I missed anything about this biome. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, uh, let me know. I read all the comments all the time, and I'm always uh, looking for feedback on our videos. Um, again, please like and subscribe so I know that you're enjoying the content and you're finding it helpful. Again, this series is meant for people who are probably newer to the game, but hopefully if you watch this, uh, you were able to find some helpful things and information about the Sunlit Plateau. All right, stay tuned for the next video. Frosted Heights, coming soon. Thanks, guys.